You're from the area. I'm actually, yeah, born, bred and reared in St. John's Park, just outside the back gate, actually, so I know this area fairly well since I was a child. And, and how long have you been working up here? I've been working in the mental health services nearly 40, 30, 38, 39 years. And I'd say you've seen a lot of change in that time? Yeah, like, when we were growing up in St. John's Park, this was a building with about nearly 600 client, patients at the time. Uh, when I came here first, again, it was around 400. And with the changes in the mental health services over the years, people have moved on into community settings or into private rented accommodation. So the numbers dramatically dropped in this centre here. And, uh, and the only way this place would have had a stigma this one time, you know, people were saying, oh, the mental, the red sure, brick and all this kind of stuff. I mean, what's your memory of all that? Yeah, I suppose growing up nearby, uh, yeah, it was always that the red brick or the, there was probably other harsher terms used about it as well you know but i think for anyone living in st john's park at that time you know when we were nine ten our memories are always of the patients that were living here because just outside the back gate down there there was supermarkets shops the candy store pub was there uh betting offices and a lot of the locals were very familiar with the patients that would have walked down through the grounds here and out the back gate so that was something you see in the drink at the candy store. Absolutely, yeah, there was and would have been well known around the area, you know. Uh, well respected around the area and their welfare often looked after by some of the locals as well. So there was a good relationship here. And, and I think there's also a good relationship with some of the uh, farm produce as well. <laughs> the, well this I suppose this was uh, maybe legally and illegally. This was a, a very self sufficient place. Back then, you know, I, I can recall that when I started here as, as a young, as a boy, uh, you know, the, the farm in St. Otter is extended way out there now to where the municipal golf course is, like out there on the outer ring road. So that was all the land that this place had. So typically on any morning of the week, there was probably 30, 40, 50 patients brought out of here, out to f work the farms, bring back the vegetables, bring back some of the, the cattle and uh, I think every Tuesday there was a local butcher came up from town to, to cut the meats so like uh, it was a very self-sufficient place I suppose maybe some people availed of discount as well uh, or some of the locals might have got in and sat for some of the supplies that were there but that was the way it was. Also, uh, a lot of plan for local people here wasn't it? Absolutely yeah like you know going back to the idea that it was self-sufficient there was always carpenters, plumbers, electricians, shoemakers, seamstresses, dressmakers. And a lot of those lived in St. John's Park area. There was lots of nursing staff from the area and lots of household staff as well. So like, yeah, it generated a fair income for that locus, St. John's Park locality. And you also grew up in the area in St. John's Park. What's your memory of growing up there as a child? Yeah, I always look back at it. I still think of people that grew up there. It was a very, it was probably a new estate at the time, but it has created great musicians, artists, athletes, sports people. It's been great people come out of St John's Park, you know, playwrights. It's been, a, and still, no matter where you go, you, you'll always meet someone from St John's Park, you know. And uh, great memories of growing up there. Very sporting area, and you know, lots of football, lots of soccer in Johnville. We were very involved here in the pitch and putt course at the time, you know, so... Yeah, no, the pitch and putt club, that was, went for many years. Yeah, it was one, I was very involved in pitch and putt myself, both locally and indeed nationally. And the, the club here would have had up to 300 members uh, in its heyday and uh, played a big part in, in reducing stigma within the hospital because I know as a club back then, we involved some of the patients in the hospital in our activities and we also ran a, an annual open where we generated funds for patients entertainment funds so like we appreciated the facilities and we appreciated the, the people that were residents here as well so we gave something back and did you want to play golf i did and i do yeah, <laughs> getting better <laughs> i can't yeah getting better yeah and, yeah. and you know, also people spoke about the dances in the hall do you have any memory of that or is that before your time? Well, I was involved in the soccer club here for many years and, and we would have organised uh, supper dances here, I suppose, you know. Uh, 
back then and typically we would have got our food down with Jean Rowan and maybe down in the takeaway downtown. We could have 250 people here at a, a function. It was one of the best halls in town. Uh, a lot of good people organising the event, so we'd always, yeah, have functions, bar extension, raise funds for the club back then. And I, I know in later years, then, the, the hall was used by a lot of theatre companies from town uh, to, to rehearse for stuff like that. Right, correct, yeah. I, I think it was in a, a very good hall. I think one of the stage was probably one of the, I think it was second best or third best in around water at the time. And yeah, I can recall teams from, from tops of the town coming up here over the years as well and uh, evading us. Wait, did you go to school or college? I did, yeah. I'm a CBS lad. I went to local school a couple of hundred yards up from my home and secondary school was at Mount Sinai. And, uh, and at that stage, I mean, obviously Chris Brothers were involved in this thing, They were, yeah. Uh, people like Brother O'Doherty. Uh, I think Brian O'Donoghue was the local teacher. He was still around, lives here in the locality still, but Brian was a young school teacher at that time. But. Uh, a lot of the staff back then were CBS, yeah, were Christian Brothers, yeah. How was it a tough and up school? Or? Oh, I, I don't, I have good memories of it, yeah, you know. Lots of good memories. Yeah, lots of good memories, surely, yeah, yeah. But the area itself had a tough reputation. It had probably back, you know, it was a new estate, really, you know, and I suppose like with anything, starting out, there'll always be uh, lots of young people, and, uh, but I remember, my memories of it growing up was that it was a settling down and it was a, it was a good phase, good time to be there, you know. Um, okay, and, and just, just characters from the time. Do you remember many characters that lived around the area, older people, that spring to mind? I remember people like being involved in, in uh, different things like athletics and sporting clubs in the area, you know. Uh, 